Um, the overall topic, as it was mentioned, uh, is uh, living uh, and in inhabiting the city centers in the perspective of the last 25 years. Um, our guests are uh, important actors in both Prague and Berlin, being in politics, architecture and culture. Um, m the majority of them is actually also active in the public scene, uh, for example, in architectural festivals, um, political parties, or citizen-led uh, campaigns and initiatives. Um, throughout the discussion, we would like to uh, hear their personal stories, um, how they are connected uh, to the city they are living in, and uh, in the more complex, uh, on the more complex level, we would like to talk about strategies, um, how to make our cities more habitable in terms of housing, uh, more socially and functionally diverse, and also more creative. For me, when I hear this question about remembering the city or what experience of the city of the last 25 years, um, I have to say that Berlin was, uh, for me, that there was a momentous moment. I mean, I, I had no, I'm half German. I had no intention of living in Germany. Then the wall fell, and I was actually uh, called by television station to, knowing that I was bilingual, to come to Berlin. So I was actually in this absolutely surreal moment, uh, age 21, uh, standing at the Brandenburg Gate. Um, and then, you know, in the ensuing months, basically, being responsible for... Uh, gathering loads of material with a French camera team based in, we were living in a hotel in, the, in East Berlin, in the, um, in the Palace Hotel, which is now being demolished. Um, and so my experience is like this, that there are these moments of incredibly compressed time that are incredible. And the first period was just phenomenally surreal because we were traveling constantly across Checkpoint Charlie with television material, and which would then be which would then be sent by satellite from West Berlin. But we were living in East Ber uh, we were staying in East Berlin for endless weeks and months, covering the East German Parliament in the um, uh, in in the building the the Place de République. Um, so filming as journalists um, and and experiencing almost I can't even remember if we drove around with a map, but having to drive around to find the uh, various. Um, sort of new members of the dissident groups and uh, interview former Stasi uh, members of the secret police and, um, and try to make phone calls. I had to sort of spend hours trying to make phone calls in an empty sort of platen, but in, a, in an empty office um, right near um, Brandenburg uh, Gate of the uh, 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 prefab building with just one phone in it and a desk and a chair and basically dialing these numbers that I'd been given by random people to find various interview so it was a very bizarre surreal time to be in and very exciting and then again I, I we uh, this compressed time I mean just to give an example of the Palace de Republique um, we saw the dis we experienced the disbanding of the East German Parliament then um, a few years later um, experienced the the moment where in fact <clears throat> It had been decided that the Palace de Republique would be demolished as a symbol of uh, East, basically um, an East German political symbol that was no longer wanted there. So we were filming, um, we were filming and ta um, talking um, within the Palace de Republique about the, the fate of this building as the architecture profession failed, in fact, to stop the demolition of this building because it was politically not wanted anymore and then a few years later to see it stripped to a sort of asbest to the sort of skeleton and then to see the Einstürzende Neubauten uh, performing in there and using the sort of remains of the building as you know a drumming on the uh, um, on, on this on this frame that was left the skeleton of the building that was left so I, I don't know it's, it's very hard to kind of talk about this in one moment but uh, um, I don't think I've ever, I, I never thought I would experience the change in a city that's so rapid. As a small town boy, I wanted, and who studied architecture, I wanted to go to a big city to learn what a big city could be. And I went to West Berlin. Um, at that time, we were not allowed to, um, to enter a university in East Berlin. We had very special conditions and for a um, 
young guy who didn't really know what a big city is, who didn't really know what urban planning is, and who didn't really know what architecture is, West Berlin was a paradise uh, because you had um, a lot of remainings from a former uh, big city, and um, you had a disappeared city, and that was an extreme uh, option for imagination. Uh, people like me learned and tried to learn what can be a big city and how is it is possible that it can disappear in one generation. And these Potsdamer Platz walks, that were our Sunday weekend or evening walks, uh, and we did, did exactly the same. We asked, where is Potsdamer Platz? Uh, where are the, why did it disappear? And is it an option um, under circumstances when everybody expected we will never uh, experience reunification in our lifetimes? Is it an option to revitalize, to restart urban life in the sandy uh, deserts of the former city center uh, of Berlin? And so um, the imagination of big cities and uh, the experience, they can disappear and they have to be saved. They have to be saved. At that time, uh, Prague was a uh, hidden beauty. Everything was gray and you didn't know which palace should collapse uh, <laughs> in the year to come. Um, and uh, you had the experience of Berlin where the city had already disappeared. That was to major experiences in uh, my uh, student uh, times. And of course, um, uh, and my generation uh, as architects in West Germany, uh, we heard every day at the university, stop uh, uh, studying architecture, you will be unemployed. And uh, when we started to be unemployed, the wall came down <laughs> and we had something to do. And then, uh, not only for my profession, but for many people who had this imagination of a lost city, of a, even of a lost continent, East Germany, uh, Czechoslovakia, Poland, um, they tried to imagine and to experience what could be uh, the next step uh, without uh, uh, clear circumstances, without a clear uh, political uh, basis and without a clear economical basis. And so uh, Central Europe, the eastern part of Central Europe and Berlin was a paradise for uh, young people like me. And now we have different experience in, uh, for 25 years uh, and also extremely touristic ones uh, in Berlin, but maybe I come to that a little bit later. Uh, I'm not living uh, in Prague for 25 years. Uh, I come actually from northern part of Bohemia, uh, from uh, a city of Teplice, which is near the border with uh, Bundesrepublik Deutschland today. Uh, and the uh, uh, first time, as I really spent the time in Prague, it was during my studies. I first studied history, and it's like here, nearby, uh, at the Charles University next door. Uh, those days, in, uh, in the late 90s, uh, the city was awaking, uh, and uh, today I think we can see the change because uh, the very center of the city in some parts is more or less a Disneyland. It's uh, no more a heritage. It started to be a heritage Disneyland. It's something which is maybe covered, where the, where the image of the city is covered sometimes by uh, by, by the people selling the goods. Uh, so I think that's if we, sp we are speaking about the center of the city. So uh, when we decided to move uh, to Prague, we were looking for some another Prague. And we have found it in Prague 7, which is uh, very near uh, to where we are today. It's, uh, it's the left bank of the river. And it reminded me uh, to the northern part of Bohemia, to Teplice and to industry which is there, because uh, 
Holoshovice and Prague 7, there are uh, a lot of pieces of industry which are there up to date and uh, they are making landmarks. There is a lot of free space and um, because we are speaking about Berlin also today, it reminds me Berlin because in the center of Berlin there's up to date pretty a lot of space which can be seen as an opportunity as a something which could be developed, which could be developed not by some developers, but which could change in a very meaningful space, which can make a, a new life, which can help us to build a, a new center of the city. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is possible in, in the very historical center of Prague where we are today. So according to me, the center of Prague is today very touristic and it changed a lot. I don't have this feeling in Berlin. Well, I think that uh, that uh, me as a representative of the city, I I have to think about how the city could help uh, people not to leave uh, centers and live there. I think that one tool, one of many tools, uh, is for example, <laughs> Uh, keeping, uh, protecting, supporting diversity of this of this parts of the city, uh, and uh, as I mentioned, Vinohrady, my my place of life. Uh, this is the place uh, where, uh, and and I, I think it's one of the of the best places uh, in in Prague, and uh, there is everything. Uh, our children are going there to the low school, uh, middle school, high school. We have uh, our studio 100 meters uh, near uh, their school. Uh, there is cinema, there is theater, there are uh, offices, uh, there is uh, sport hall, everything, shops, restaurants. So, uh, but for example, in the in the historic center, uh, it doesn't function. This 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 thing. Uh, there now uh, there are not small shops here. I think uh, only only few schools and so on and so on. Uh, so this is one of the ways. And on the other side, uh, my main topic of work in last two three years is public space. And uh, what is also necessary is quality of public spaces also in the center. But on the other side, uh, we have a big problem uh, when we want to uh, revitalize uh, public space or make new public space somewhere where people don't live, where they are only working or uh, where there are only uh, officers or foreigners. Uh, it doesn't function because uh, uh, real public space, functional public space, need normal people who are living normal everyday life there. Normal things, uh, not only some uh, amusing and attractions and Disneyland and so on and so on. So it's a circle. Yeah, the quality of public spaces, uh, people who live there, and diversity of these parts. One, one tool of it, and there are necessary. Yeah many other tools. I think like some of these developments, they are really like, even though the cities are so dif different, they're actually quite similar developments and similar challenges. Like I noticed, for example, already many years ago that in Zizhkov, that many houses were actually transformed into like, tenement houses were transformed into hostels and probably also in other boroughs of Prague. Um, but I think that here it was like, hardly ever really questioned like i think this like whole process of touristification because it started like in early in the 90s and uh, also because the center was in a way pretty empty like there, there weren't so many functions in the city maybe not even uh, there were people living there but also many people made um, money by by uh, moving out in a way so 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 it wasn't only like kind of brutal force but also uh, it and this gentrification also offered for many people in a way uh, um, opportunities like to, to make some money by, by just offering their flat. Um, so, so when I came from, from Berlin then to Prague, I was really surprised by this absence of any discussion at that time, like on, on for example, tourism, but also on these like major decisions to, to sell huge, like, uh, like a huge city property to, to private developers without I mean, there was some expert discussion, but basically in the in the media, 
it was just like basically just a notice or it was just a very it wasn't like systematically explored uh, which changed a lot I think in in recent years but uh, also because of this like absence of discussion I think a lot of unnecessary damage was done